Hi everyone, Big Paulie back for another exciting episode of What is in the Poundland Bin? What can it be this week? I wonder. Um, and I'm being so generous this week because we didn't have one last week. I'm giving you two. That's it. Two Poundland Bins. Two, I say. So we better dig down deep now and see what's in the first Poundland bin. Uh, one episode will be uploaded Sunday morning, which no doubt you're watching this on Sunday morning. Snuggled up in bed with some porridge and a cup of tea, probably. As the weather shits down outside. <laughs> oh, yes. And the second Poundland bin will be in the evening, about seven o'clock. So you can snuggle down and watch some antiques road show shit and then switch it off and then watch the other episode. So here we go then. Let's have a look and see what's in the Poundland bin. Let's do it. <laughs> Dokey, so here we go. Oh, I have mm, got some fur on there. Look, must be off uh, Bobby. Anyway, let's go and find out what is in. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, now I've got a sealed one. I don't know what the bloody hell it is, but let's yank it out. Pardon. <laughs> Oh, me. Oh, dear me, what's going on? <clears throat> Okie dokie. Oh, yes, baby. It's sealed. Listen. It's sealed. Okie dokie. Right. First Poundland bin of the day. <sighs> Brace yourself. Oh, okie dokie. Smart, sexy, completely gripping. Fifty shades darker. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> the Ides of March. The Ides of March. Ryan Gosling, George Clooney. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Paul Giamatti, Marissa Tomei, Jeffrey Wright and Evan Rachel Wood. Bloody hell, that's a cast. And is that copy of Time magazine there? Looks good. Was it during the frantic days before a heavily contested presidential primary, up and coming campaign press secretary, Ryan Gosling, battles the, for governor, Mike Morris, George Clooney, in a race to win the Democratic presidential nomination. Oh, bollocks. Just what we need. Politics. <laughs> I bloody hate politics. But it might be a good watch. So, and it's kind of, it's kind of relevant. Seeing as though that they're going through the midterms in the US at the moment. So, at least I'm not, not at least I'm, yeah. <laughs> At least it's not Trump, though, is it? <laughs> I've probably angered some Trump supporters out there now. <laughs> Trump was good in Apprentice, and I think maybe he should have stayed there. But I'm not getting into politics. I don't want to get into politics, so you vote for whoever the shit you want for. OK, so let's unwrap this and stick this in the player and watch the Ides of March. Good job it's not February, isn't it? Okay, so here we are, the Ides of March, all unwrapped. So let's have a look inside. Let me find it out. Oh, look, and we've got a nice little picture as well. Oh, uh, come on, get out, boy. Same as the front, same as the front, same as it ever was, same as it ever was. Okie dokie, here we go. Oh, yes. Ooh, smash! In you go. And let's engage. Pew! 
Okay, so we are sitting down. I'm going to have to pull the blinds in a minute because I've just forgot to pull the blinds. It's going to be too bloody light in here. I can't have that. Um, I've got my drink. Duh, walking Dead. It's not got zombie juice in it. <laughs> or blood. It's got some nice diet coke. Ice cold. Oh, yes, baby. And we have an umbrella. <laughs> an umbrella. <laughs> it's a banana. Umbrella. What? Uh, um, yeah, okay. Right, okay. We better get into the film because I'm going slightly mad here. Right, let us get into the film and see what is the Ides of March. Okay, so disc is in. Umbrella at the ready. Let's watch the Ides of March. Okay, so the Ides of March. Smart, sexy and completely gripping. Uh, yeah, I wasn't too sure to start with because being a bit of a US political movie, um, US politics is not something over here in the UK that we're too familiar with. So I thought it was going to get lost in... <laughs> lost in translation. I thought it was going to get lost in, um, you know, not understanding all this kind of stuff. Um, basically, the whole thing starts off with Ryan Goslin, who plays Stephen Myers, who's this campaign manager that's uh, working for George Clooney's character, uh, Governor Mike Morris. Uh, he's trying to get him into the presidency. The whole thing starts off with a sound check that Ryan Gosling's character is doing for the Ohio, Ohio De uh, Democratic debate. Yeah, so Paul Giamatti plays a character called Tom Duffy, who's the campaign manager for the opposite side. So whereas Stephen is with the Democrats, Paul Giamatti will be um, what, for the Republicans, I guess. The whole thing is, it is politics. The first half of the film, if you're not into politics, it could be quite slow. Uh, it's all about, the, you know, the campaign, the headquarters, all the number crunching stuff going on behind the scenes. And sometimes it switches to like George's character, um, the, uh, the governor, doing kind of like a, um, like a town hall question and answer thing with all the low you know all the townsfolk and all that D a debate but you know what i mean uh jim is tom duffy actually offers Stephen a job on the opposite side one thing leads to another you know whether should he tell Clooney that he's met with the opposition that kind of thing it all gets very politically embroiled and hush hush and all that kind of shit but also Stephen gets kind of romantically involved with uh, the campaign intern played by the lovely Erin Rachel Wood. She is fantastic in Westworld. Um, so she's a campaign, she's a campaign intern, you know, bring the coffee and all that kind of shit. But being involved with her, he discovers a big secret that she's been keeping that has to do with George Clooney's character. Some data and information gets leaked from one side to the other. Stephen, unfortunately, gets sacked, you know, like, because loyalty is everything. And with him holding secrets and things like that and, uh, and not telling um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, who... who is his boss, Stephen's boss, not telling him that he met up with this Paul Duffy. Um, he can't trust him. So, you know, loyalty is everything. So he fires him, you know. So the secret that Stephen has discovered is that the intern, Evan Rachel Wood, um, he's been having a bit of a fling thing with the governor. 
uh, and she gets up the duff. So she needs to have an abortion. But with Stephen being involved in, you know, getting sacked and his head somewhere else, he completely um, ignores her sort of like cry for help. And unfortunately, she's discovered in the hotel um, having died of overdose, drugs overdose or, you know, prescription pills overdose. In all of this intrigue and revealing and all that kind of shit, Stephen threatens to leak uh, Mike's involvement with this whole pregnancy thing, which will basically take his entire campaign down. Um, and he goes up against Philip Seymour Hoffman, goes to Paul Giamatti. You know, he's been fired from the Democrat side, so he's going to go to the Republican side and say, I'm in, you know, hire me. But um, Paul Giamatti knows that he's been sacked, so he's not going to take him on. Um, so basically all that's left for poor Stephen is, you know, tuck your tail behind yourself, go and find another job somewhere, um, some consulting job or that kind of shit. But he feels he's put too much into this, you know, for his career. So he goes and has a meeting with the governor, George, and tells him this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen, that he needs to sack Philip Seymour Hoffman's character and make him the campaign manager and kind of like threatens that he'll leak the information that will basically bring his governorship down. It's all the political shit that you normally get the backstabbing the secrets the you know the scum and all that kind of shit. Sometimes I wonder who's the criminal actually the people that are in prison or politicians but that's a debate for another day. Talking of debates, like they do in the US, you know, as we saw with the recent president, you know, with Trump versus Hillary and, you know, up on the podiums. Why can't we have that in the UK? That would actually be quite interesting. I might actually watch that. That'd be interesting to watch, like, Theresa May going up against Corbyn. That'd be so much fun, I think. Uh, because then we'll be able to see exactly that they're both knobs anyway. But it'll be it'll be a bit of fun anyway. Yes, so as I say, if you're not into politics, and I certainly am not, no interest in politics. Um, and US politics is completely different anyway, so not being you know familiar with it. I kind of thought, oh, this is going to be a bit boring. This is going to be really boring. It is a bit slow for the first half of the film. But then when things start happening with the tragedy and the backstabbing and all that kind of shit, it does get a little bit better. Uh, kind of becomes, not edge of seat, but it becomes engrossing. So that kind of like had me hooked. Uh, it's not a film that I'm possibly going to be watching anytime soon again. Uh, but it is, um, I would say it's a good film. It's a very well-structured film. The cast is brilliant. Um, Ryan Gosling is fantastic in this. He's not his usual drive and Blade Runner self, you know, very low-key, emotionless. He's actually really good in this. Um, George Clooney is quite good. Well, George is always George. Um, and the other cast members, they yeah, they're, they're pretty good. I mean, Paul Giamatti, although they don't have huge screen time with Philip Seymour Hoffman and Evan Rachel Wood, they are good. They are good characters, but they never really shine in the film. Um, picture wise, picture wise was good. Uh, you know, there's no heavy grain. I couldn't see any grain evident. Uh, it's not a bright film. It's not a bright film because it's politics. So there's lots of dark colours, some greys. It's a very low-key palette, if you know what I mean. Uh, sound is Dolby uh, DTS HD Master Audio 5.1, which my system upscaled to the neural, so that was pretty good. Nothing out of the ordinary for the sound, though. Nothing spectacular for the sound. 
Um, it has got quite a few extras on here. It's got a commentary with George Clooney and Grant Haslow, I think it is, or Heslow. Developing the campaign of the origins of the Ides of March. Believe uh, George Clooney on the campaign, the cast of Ides of March, and and what does a political consultant do? So it's a bit of a like of a history lesson of you know what really does go on, but I'm not really interested. <laughs> also, Marissa Tomai, 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 Tom, Tomai. <laughs> Is in it as well as uh, Jeffrey Wright, but they have very minimal roles in it. But um, yes, political. If you like political stuff, then you'd like it. Um, it was all right for a watch. So far as how would I rate it? Um, out of ten, I'd give it. I'd probably give it six. Six out of ten. So yeah, it was. It was okay. It was a good watch, um, but it's not something I'm going to go out of my way to to watch or, um, yeah. So, what should we do with it then? Should we put it up on the shelf there or should we put it down in the recycling for the old charity shop? So, let's ask the Stormtrooper, what should we do with it? <laughs> because you can... I can't... There's no point me getting the Stormtrooper to throw it in the bin because they'd bloody miss it. You're useless, you are. You're useless, shots. Okay, so let's put it where it deserves to be. Okay, so we have the Ides of March. So, where shall we put it? Let's have a look, shall we? Okay, as I said, it's really going to be more or less a one-time watch for me. So, it's not going to go up on the shelf there with all of the other Poundland ones. So, um, I think I shall put this down in the recycling which will then go to a charity shop and somebody else can watch it. Maybe someone that's more in tune with politics. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of What's in the Poundland Bin? Um, give the video a thumbs up. Share the video with all your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video, which will be another episode of What's in the Poundland Bin later tonight. Blimey, it don't get any better than this on a Sunday, does it? Bye-bye.